All right, today we're going to talk about how to solve bounce back. But a part of that is understanding what kind of bounce back do you have. Is it I-term induced bounce back or P-term induced bounce back? It's critical to be able to distinguish between the two to know how to solve the problem. So today, we're going to take a look at a couple different flights where I have I-term induced bounce back versus P-term induced bounce back. And as always, we're going to have the black box overlay. And you can see on here, just so if you're not familiar with it, the orange burnt line here, that is the throttle percent. So when it's all the way at the top, that's 100%. It's all the way at the bottom, that's 0%. And then the green lines here are the target, basically the sticks. So that's roll, pitch, and yaw. And then you can see the green lines are my commanded degrees per second. So when they're at the middle, it's zero degrees per second. When they're at the far extents, that's my max rate. Uh, what it, and for me, it's a thousand degrees per second, but it, it's whatever you have your rates at. And then this cyan line, uh, that is what the quad is actually doing for its rotation. So we are commanding, you know, rotations in degrees per second on roll, on pitch, and on yaw at all times with the sticks. And then the gyro is tracking that movement in real time on the quad and trying to get it to match that. So the difference between the two is basically the, the error. And that's kind of the, what we're trying to close. That's what the PID loop's trying to solve. So in short, in the ideal scenario, the cyan line is on top of the green line at all times. Let's check out this flight segment and I'll show you what I term induced bounce back looks like. So you can see there, it's following the sticks pretty well. No real bounce back there. Uh, there as well, didn't have any bounce back. So it, it really depends on how hard you're moving and kicking the moves. There we saw some bounce back though. And there a little bit is more uh, as well. So you can see more and more bounce back as we're going, uh, just implementing harder and harder stick moves. And how we know it's I turn reduce bounce back is it's real subtle and uh, real soft and you can easily see it. Right here in just a second I'm going to do a bunch of moves and uh, show you some of this, you know, how easy it is to see this eye turn induced bounce back. You can see it right there as well, big, big overshoot and bounce back. Very easy to see right here. So let's take a closer look at what the log shows on that. So at this spot in the log with this flip, you can see how the gyro just way overshoots and then bounces back up to meet set point, to meet where my stick commands are. And that's really the differentiator for I turn reduce bounce back. If you can do a flip or a roll and you can easily see it bouncing and going back, so going past and then bouncing back up, that is definitely I term induced bounce back. So I'll let you watch the rest of this clip and see if you can notice where the I term reduced bounce back is and kind of get a mind's eye for what that looks like. <laughs> So that was beta flight on this quad, which is my Flight One Nova with this tune on it. And you can see in here, I have, you know, aggressive feed forward and 
uh, aggressive I term, aggressive D, aggressive P, the whole the whole deal, uh, aggressive filter tune and everything. And that was simply just turning off I term relax. So if you're having any I term induced bounce back, make sure your I term relax is enabled. And the thing you want to adjust in beta flight at least is your cutoff. So maybe 15 is a little too high for you. Uh, on cine lifters, this needs to go down to like a five to you know solve any I term induced bounce back issues. So you might need to take this down to a 10 or a five. Just keep moving that cutoff down if you're having that slow bounce back that you can easily see in the FPV or HD footage. Adding more dampening or D term when you have I term induced bounce back is not going to solve the problem. You need to uh, work with I term relax in that's in beta flight, INAV, or EMU flight. Now you may be wondering, what if I'm not using Betaflight iNav or Emu Flight, where I have some sort of iTerm clamping, you know, iTerm relax thing? You know, in Betaflight and iNav, they use the same uh, code to clamp the iTerm, basically stop it when you do sharp stick moves, so it can't accumulate and and cause iTerm bounce back. Uh, in Emu Flight, they it, it kind of relaxes the iTerm a little bit with uh, how much influence the gains have. You can see my cat in there, um, but uh, but if you have other firmware that, uh, like closed source firmware, that you don't have those tools in the toolbox, well, check out my Patreon. I have a video releasing at the same time this one is, where we go through how to solve iTerm bounce back uh, when you don't have a tool like iTerm Relax. Well, that's all well and good. But what if you've taken iTerm Relax down to 10 or 5 and you still think you see a little bit of bounce back. What's the solution for that? Well, in that case, you may have, well, it's very rare, but you may have P-term induced bounce back where your P-term is way too high in relation to your damping uh, of your quad. All right, this one's with I-term relax back turned on and then super high P-term. Tracking slider 2.0, baby. Ooh. So this will be P-term induced bounce back and you can see it's going to be very quick and you'll see it in the gyro trace, there's quick overshoots, but you can't really, if you kind of look through the traces and look into the HD, you're not going to be able to really see it in the HD footage. Um, if you just had HD footage, you wouldn't really hardly be able to see it. So if it's bounce back that is... You think you see something, you know, around the edges, but uh, you're not quite sure, and you can kind of hear it, this, you know, boom, boom, at uh, sound at the end of a flip or roll, where it's that's that bounce back sound. Um, then it's probably P-term induced bounce back, and that is a different monster. So I'll let it play through the rest of this clip. See if you can try to notice where the P-term bounce back is. You can, again, see it in the logs there where you can see those traces uh, go past and, and real quick. But you'll notice that they're, you know, really rapid where it's going past the set point and bouncing back up where the I-term one was kind of bouncing past and then rolling back up. And it was a lot slower and you could easily see it in the HD footage. It's almost like you meant to go past and come back where P-term, it's... It's so quick that you can even do that with your sticks if you tried. And then also really try to listen to the audio and see if you can just hear it. It's almost like a at the very end as it's doing its little P-turn bounce back to uh, get back to the set point. what happens when you disarm too quick but uh, it's all right I couldn't see <laughs> it was, I couldn't see out of the FPV camera anyways
So here were the settings for that flight. And you won't believe it, but I had P166. Uh, I terms were all max at 250. That's as high as it can go. Essentially, I took the tracking slider and jammed it all the way up against 2.0. And it uh, it flew. <laughs> so it's a P to D ratio of 3.0. P terms three times higher than D term. In that scenario where you have P term bounce back, what you need to do, at least in beta flight 4.3, is either need to reduce your tracking slider or go ahead and increase your damping slider. One or the other. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's a P to D balance. That's going to be your solution there. So if you have this really quick, hardly can see it, uh, you know, bounce back sound, that is probably P term induced. However, 99.9% .9 of the time, I think I term induced bounce back is where people are suffering from, where you really just need to uh, focus on I term relax in the open source firmware. And again, adding more dampening or D term when you have I term induced bounce back is not going to solve the problem. You need to uh, work with I term relax in that's in beta flight, INAV, or EMU flight. If again, if you have P term induced bounce back, then yes, sure, you need to increase your dampening or D term. Uh, or, you know, vice versa, you can also decrease your P-term. If you are uh, decreasing your P-term, you may want to also bring down your I-term with it as well. Uh, again, in beta flight uh, 4.3, the tracking slider kind of does that for you, so it simplifies things. But, uh, but those are your solutions, you know, uh, focusing on a little bit more D-term, a little less P-term to uh, solve that, really, that P-term induced bounce back at that, at that point. All right, well, that is it. Hopefully now you can tell the difference between the two different types of bounce back. Because again, knowing what type or what is causing the problem is quintessential in knowing what you need to do to solve it. If you do have any remaining questions, please drop them down in the comments below. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.